When London won the Olympic bid in 2005, 20 Irish traveller families living on a council-run site at the edge of Hackney learned that they would have to move. The traveller families had lived on Waterton Crescent for 13 years and had their children at local schools. They went through a long process to relocate their community and are now living on three separate sites within the borough of Hackney. changes in people's life. The Olympic, Hackney, London winning the Olympic made changes for everyone. It just wasn't the traveller community. It's changes for everyone. But we found it a bit harder as the traveller community, having to go through all the media, go through all the changes, because we were so isolated on Walter the Road and everything. And all of a sudden everyone was looking at you. Everything, the media kind of was on you. Yeah. Zoom! Yeah. <laughs> everything was a phase. Travellers having to move. But move when you look at this, it's, it's, it seems unreal, but it's true. Couldn't be no blessed where we are, we're in a beautiful place, and everything turned out the best for us. But it was a long, hard journey. You know, it was long and stressful for older people. Some of them, like, have been a bit hangry. You didn't want it to happen, but it happened. That was so lonely for the old side. Could you see more of your family coming in and out to you now? I'm quite happy now where I am. It is hard, but I admit it, it's very, very hard and lonesome. Mm. Yeah, very... We're all our life with big families, you say. Families split up. People had to choose, had to go different ways, smaller groups. So it was very hard deciding at the times to cause frictions and families fell out and, uh, you know, there's bitterness. But every, everything is beautiful at the moment. Everyone's lovely, everyone is happy where they are, but at the time, it was a very, very, very sad time for a lot of families. I had the split of her family going one side and more going on the other side. Because we wanted a wedding the one area for God. There was no way we were going to build a 20 pitch site in Hackney again. Yeah. Because when we went out there 20, like 15 years ago at that time, that was an isolated place. But we, we adapted into that and then to bring us in, in the Hackney. <laughs> And how how do you feel about living here now? It's all right. When I first came here, got a couple of robberies. Then, and then it's, well, it's kind of settled down now. It's like it's all right here. And what's how do you feel, do you like the area better than where you were before? No, like cause it's kind of too dangerous around here. Like last time was alone. I got mugged last time. I know I know I was stabbed. It's very too it's very dangerous around these areas. Yeah, I was out there. He came up to me. He pulled out the knife, he said, give me your phone, he said, hand it out the phone, he drew, he drew a van. This was about five, there was about five, six o'clock in the evening. It's all about on the other side, um, you feel safer there? Ah, yeah, because there's no one there. I had more of my, I had more of my family around here. Really? And I have all my family around me now, but it's still dangerous here, and on the other side. What, why is that? Because... Because all the youths. It's too, it's too dangerous. We they don't know who we are, and they think they can do anything to us. It's like um, there's so many um, built up, so much built up around you, so many tower blocks. You feel like you're always being someone watching you all the time. Mm. You learn to forget, mm. but there's, you still know the very minute you walk out, you're doing anything, and you look up at a, a set of a flat, and you say, you don't know who's looking down. Mm. And the shops are so close, and the people are so close. But we've we've adapted very well in with the with the people in the square. Oh, very no. very nice, aren't they? Very very. Yeah. We had a little bit of hassle in the beginning with kids standing coming back from school. But kids is kids. When we came first, everyone you get the people standing looking in all day, and you have people taking photos, and you'd be saying, oh, really? "Who are they? <laughs> what are they at?" Never used to mix with the southern community. The only people we'd know was an LGTU. <laughs> The local priest. Yeah. Yeah. They were as much as much nosy about us as we were about them. Mm. So it went both ways. Do you know what? There was times when we moved in when we were, if you were walking towards the shop and you'd see people, you'd think they were talking about you and you'd just keep going. You wouldn't, you just keep, you just walk. You'd know they were talking, that's the traveller. But you'd, you'd ignore it and you'd keep going. But now, once they know your face, it's Hello, good morning, it's nice to see you, you know, because we give them as much as they give us. This, that's what we had to do when we came in here, we knew that. There was no point like trying to isolate ourselves in here. 
when we were so close mm. to the built-up area. So there's a lot of families there struggling, there uh, living on top of one another, two families per house, and you know we're not used to that way of life. So it's, it's an awful thing for the young generation where they prefer to have old sites to just move into, and then if there was land, they'd move on to on on authority land, but you can't do it anymore. But all, all the laws has changed. You know, the old, the old way of life, travellers' way of life, um, sticking together, waiting together. We have seen now we're all separated because we had to separate. Then it's keeping them, keeping your family around you. When they get married, they move away into the council house so because they have no sight. So they're going by, they're living in a council house, the kids is going to school. The children aren't learning very much about the traveller way of life. If you're still on a site, then they're more or less outside listening to old old people talking about past and just just different things. You can make an open fire and you can you can cook on it and you can see it being done. That's all changed when travellers move into houses. The way of life is changing for everyone, but the travellers don't want the way of life to change. But I think it's the new generation, the younger generation is changing it for themselves. They've lost an awful lot of um, interest in old ways of life. I was, I was born there. I was born in Hamilton. And then I moved, I lived there all my life. Never moved nowhere to stay there. And what age were you when you moved sites? Because of the I left my site when I was 11 to a different site. I came here last year, two years ago, uh -huh. when I was about 12. Oh, okay, the one, like, the difference between this site and that site. This one has, like, high shops, has everything around there. It's more, we have a load of freedom. That site there had all blocked off edges, had nothing there. It was like this site here with a load of shadings. Not really in it. It's just all bored of my life. I thought we were in a very powerful position, yeah, I did. Yeah, because of the Olympic wanting us out, where we were living was a very important bit of ground. So, like, the ball was in our favour. But we just need the courage and the backbone to push ourselves forward and get what we wanted. And we did. We did do it, and it can be done. But for other travellers out there, it can be done. But you just need to have that favour of winning the Olympics. <laughs> it gave you that more um, voice, yeah, your own voice. So you weren't afraid to stand up and speak. Where, you know, you, you went to the meetings and you, the courage, you got more courage by being at the meetings and learning, listening to them and them asking your opinion. So you got more of a voice, you got more heard. Your voice went across. So I thought that was very good. Where at stages like if this didn't happen, there wasn't a lot of people out there to talk for travel community. So people could stand on their feet and do it for themselves now. So I think that them, them, that was a very good thing that came out. If there's something happening now around here, you know, if like if the kids, if we had um, trouble, you know, from gang members or things like, well, you, there's, you don't need to go and get someone to speak for you. You can go approach mm. these people yourself. It gives you that much courage mm. to go and sort of thing out for yourself. One thing I'd like to say is that we would have loved them if the whole 20 pitches of Hackney could have waited together. We would have loved them to have that, but it wasn't possible. So, but that's just a sad point. Everyone just went different ways and different groups. So, but I would have loved them if we could just have stayed together. And yeah, you know, people bring the subject up. We're saying, remember the good times that happened in Waterdown. Such a thing happened in Waterdown. It's even now, it's like, um, not even everyone sees one another at weddings. Not even everyone has the same local. Or in water and everyone did. It was remarkable. It just shows you the divide. What happened and it's so sad.